Hello and welcome to News Round, a recap of stories in the week. I'm Tenyor Lash Shubo Ale. The headlines. 39 students still missing from the College of Forestry in Kaduna State after troops rescued 180 others from bandits. Organised labour protests against proposed bills seeking removal of minimum wage from exclusive list. Nigerians commemorate International Women's Day, challenge bias and gender inequality. Plus, victims of a series of explosions in Equatorial Guinea's largest city buried in a mass funeral. That's News Round in View. News Round takes off with the state of security, especially in northern Nigeria. This time, 39 students are missing after gunmen once again abducted students from the Federal College of Forestry, Africa in Kaduna State. Although troops have rescued 180 others from the abductors, the Kaduna State government says the missing students comprise 23 females and 16 males. Anxiety of parents on display at the gate of the Federal College of Forestry Mechanization in Afaka, Igabi local government area of Kaduna State. Their apprehension is a result of news of an incident concerning their children which has brought them out. May government do something. All these things with the year and far away now, you don't reach where we day. Which one will they inside now? Will they our house will not save. Children they school they not safe. Now we say government no one may our children go school, me. Me I don't know. I don't know what I go talk past that one. Let them go rescue our children. Let them bring our children back for us. Hundreds of students have been abducted by bandits, but the swift response of security forces led to the rescue of 180, with some still missing. The military and other security agencies are working around uh, the clock. Uh, some of the students that were rescued uh, sustained injuries, just bruises within uh, the school environment. They are presently receiving a medical attention at a military uh, facility. Certainly, uh, military and other security uh, agencies are working around uh, the clock. This man is glad his son was rescued, but wants the government to exert more pressure on getting the others released. It will not be good. We just found just few security men, civil uh, civilian security by the gate here, and something is happening inside the school. What will the security men do? So we're begging the government to at least help and send in security men to beef off this school so that to help that if anything should happen again, at least the security will be of help to the school and even to the government. This is how the bandits made their way into the school premises, which underscores the need to intensify security in personnel and technology. As the government and security forces work this out, parents of the remaining students yet to be rescued pray the situation is resolved as quickly and safely as possible. Staying with security, the National Security Advisor Babagana Mongruno insists the federal government is determined to deal with criminals trying to blackmail the country. Major General Mongruno made this clear while responding to renewed calls for the engagement of foreign mercenaries during the presidential weekly briefing at the State House in Abuja. Only last okay. week, the National Security Advisor made no bones about employing kinetic force to tackle insurgency. At the third presidential weekly briefing at the State House, the NSA is not backing down on that threat. There will be no negotiations or blackmailing. For now, we can't keep on dwelling on let's dialogue psychologically it's not even good for us 
It paints the picture of weakness. It paints the picture of incapacity. And I, just like the governor of Kaduna State, do not see the, any reason why we cannot, with what we have, deal with these elements. According to him, the government is still very concerned about the tripartite issues of under-equipment, lack of personnel, and intelligence sharing. The military was able to take out 2,403 insurgents, but not everybody knows that. The military was able to free 864 kidnap victims. Nobody really knows or feels that because you can only relate to what is happening in your own situation. So the president has always told me that it is very, very important because without the local community, and you can see that we've been thinking of community policing, the idea is that the local community gives you the basic intelligence you need to deal with these outlaws. In response to questions about the employment of mercenaries to fight the war, the NSA underpins that it will not be considered. This is basically a, pres a presidential directive, and there are so many issues. When you come to the issue of mercenaries, it has to do with the issue of national pride also. I know you will say, can pride be more of a concern than our security? I do understand that. But what we're looking at here is that we have the resources. It's just misapplication or underutilization that has affected our ability to deal with these people. In another response to a question on the Islamic cleric, Sheikh Ahmad Gumi, he disclosed that he had met and interacted with him and is still waiting for the cleric. I met with him when I went with the service chiefs to Kaduna and um, we spoke generally in, uh, during the meeting and he resolved to help government we are waiting. And the NSA underscores the crucial need for more cooperation, not just among relevant institutions, but among the three arms of government in order to coordinate a more superior fight against insurgency. From the presidential villa, Gloria Umezuke, Channels Television News. Now to the bill seeking to amend the National Minimum Wage Act this week. Members of organized labor in the federal capital, Abuja, staged a protest to the National Assembly to challenge the development. The amendment is being sponsored by a member representing Sabongari Federal Constituency of Kaduna State. He seeks the transfer of the minimum wage prescription from the exclusive legislative list to the concurrent legislative list set out on that the second schedule of the 1999 Constitution as amended. The leadership of the National Assembly has, however, assured organized labor that the bill will be squashed. Apart from Abuja, labor union activists across the northern part of the country also joined the protest. The Unity Fountain in Abuja is the venue for the takeoff of the protest, and members of the organized labor converge one after the other as early as 7 in the morning. The president of the Nigerian Labor Congress, Ayubo Waba, arrives in company of other labor leaders and immediately addresses the crowd. Let us ask him, how much is his salary per month? That, that, how much is he earning? We are, we are told, and nobody has contravented this fact, they are collecting 30 million per month. How can he, in his right senses, now say that 30,000, the current minimum wage, is too much for Nigerian workers? Can we say shame to him? Shame! Certainly Nigerian workers are not happy. He must withdraw that bill with immediate effect. From there, the protesters marched through the street of Abuja, carrying placards with different inscriptions that expressed their concerns. They arrived at the gate of the National Assembly and forcefully pushed their way through the gate, defying all attempts by security personnel to stop them. The deputy chief whip of the Senate meets the protesters halfway and tries to engage them, but they will not yield, insisting they must get to the assembly complex. In front of the complex, they present the letter of their protest to representatives of both the Senate 
and the House of Representatives, who assure them that their grievances will be addressed. We will stand by you to ensure that the fundamental right of every worker is not only enforced, but is ensured and guaranteed. The only justice that bill is to kill the bill. <laughs> From Abuja to Kano State, where the story is the same, as organized labor storms the State House of Assembly. In Taraba State, the unionists were initially resisted from entering the State House of Assembly premises. However, following pressures, they were given access into the premises to submit their letter to the leadership of the State Assembly. Next is Katsina. Here, workers marched through the streets of the State Capitol to the House of Assembly where they submitted their protest letter to the Speaker of the Assembly. In Kaduna, members of the organized labor marched along major roads in the state capital, carrying placards with various inscriptions, singing solidarity songs. The protesters proceeded to the Kaduna State House of Assembly to register their displeasure with the proposal. It's the same story in Zamfara, Kwara, Adamawa and Sokoto states, as workers expressed their displeasure with the proposal. The national minimum wage in the country is currently pegged at 30,000 naira a month, but many state governors say they cannot pay that amount. The protests also extended to the southern part of the country as organized labor in solidarity with their counterparts visited different state of assemblies to ensure lawmakers listened to their requests. These are members of organized labor at the State House of Assembly complex in Alausa, Lagos. Different banners bear messages that the union is passing across. The agitation is, the minimum wage must not move to the concurrent list. We know that that situation is the voice of Jacob behind Obiso. Oh yes. We know that the governors across the state are the ones beating that drum. And it is a drum that if we all dance to, none of us will like it. What we have come to do today it's not necessarily to protest or to shut down the nation. It is to express our displeasure and ask that immediately that bill be stopped. A member of the State House of Representatives responds to organized labor. You have said it all. We have we listened to you attentively and we want to assure you that we'll do the justice within the short period. Your, 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 your relevant document and what you have said will get to the appropriate conditions. Now to Bielsa State in South South Nigeria, as workers take to the streets of Yenogwa in protest. In Delta State, policemen joined the protesters as they marched their way to the state assembly. They want the federal government to focus on other matters. From Delta to Oyo. Labor members here, armed with placards, march on the streets of Ibadan, the Oyo state capital, to demonstrate their displeasure with the bill. It's not a futile effort marching to the state legislative complex, where the leadership of the assembly promises that the bill will not sail through the state chambers. Finally, in Ogun State, the protesters marched through Abelko to the state capital, the promise to oppose any attempt to decentralize the minimum wage. The days to come will determine if these reactions will affect the passage or rejection of the bill. When News Round returns in just a moment, Nigerians commemorate International Women's Day, challenge bias and gender inequality. Please stay with us. Thanks for staying with us. March the 8th every year draws global accolades for women in commemoration of the International Women's Day. The day is set aside to celebrate their achievement and raise awareness about gender equality. This year, the focus is on the theme, Choose to Challenge, a campaign against bias and inequality. 
Celebrated annually on March the 8th, International Women's Day is a global day celebrating the social, economic, cultural and political achievements of women. The day also marks a call to action for accelerating gender parity. The campaign theme for International Women's Day 2021 is Choose to Challenge, with people being called on to choose to challenge and call out gender bias and inequality. According to UNICEF, Nigeria's maternal mortality rate remains high and more girls than boys are out of school, exposing them to different forms of abuse. However, it's not all doom and gloom for Nigeria, as a number of trailblazing women are making the country proud. An example is Nigeria's richest woman, for Lawrence Shalakija. What a man can do, a woman can do. And I don't see any reason why a woman shouldn't be able to do it. You can prove your points, you understand me, by letting them know that, listen, I've done this, I can do the next one. Another trailblazer is the Director General of the World Trade Organization, Dr. Ngozi Okonjo Iwiala, who resumed office on March the 1st. Today, WTO members are making history. For the first time in the 73 years of GATT and WTO, you are selecting a woman and an African as Director General. This is groundbreaking and positive. UN Deputy Secretary General Amina Mohammed is another woman making Nigeria and Africa proud. When people see me in the United Nations, I remind them that I started my school in Meduguri. So you can become anything that you wish to be. You just have to work hard and you have to believe and you have to do the right thing. And you have to have faith. Whichever faith you have, you have to have faith. Beautiful, intelligent, high flyers like former Vice President of the World Bank, Dr. Obieze Kwesili and Aruma Ote also make the list. And corporate Amazon Ibukwa Woshika cannot be left out. Whether in the corporate world, in politics, on the young front, Nigerian women are making a mark because they dare to challenge stereotypes and rise above real and emergent limitations. So the question for all women, and men as well, on International Women's Day is, will you choose to challenge? Doing so brings us a step closer to reaching the fifth sustainable development goal of achieving gender equality and empowerment of all women and girls by the year 2030. Temi Tokwe Fagbimi, reporting for Channels Television News. The federal government is set to receive the sum of £4.2 million from the United Kingdom. This fund has been recovered from associates and family members of former Delta State Governor Mr. James Ibori. The Memorandum of Understanding for the Return of the Money has been signed by representatives of the two countries. The newly appointed chairman of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, Abdul Rashid Bawa, says that the anti-corruption body has identified about 70 billion naira fraud in the fuel subsidy program of the federal government. Mr. Bawa stated this in an interview with journalists after testifying in a 1.4 billion naira fraud trial involving an oil company, Arabo Energy, at the Lagos High Court. Although the trial predates his appointment as EFCC chairman, Mr. Bauer has been involved in the investigation of the matter, becoming the first EFCC boss to give evidence in court. The FCC accused the first defendant, Abubakar Ali Peters, and his company, Nadabo Energy, of allegedly using forged documents to obtain 1.4 billion naira from the federal government as oil subsidy after allegedly inflating the quality of PMS reportedly supplied. The defendants had pleaded not guilty to the charge. This is, uh, uh, I don't want to talk about the facts of uh, the matter because it's going to be, you know, it's, it's in court, it's of duties for me to discuss, but it's uh, part of um, the several cases that we have charged in court in 2012 after we concluded investigation on uh, petroleum uh, subsidy fraud related uh, you know cases as you are aware that uh, even last week we we, we secured conviction of uh, pargo petroleum uh, limited as uh, being promoted by one mr olua shegun ogumbambo uh, we have made a lot of uh, recoveries uh, you know from the petroleum subsidy cases i think we have identified fraud of about uh, 70 billion and as at now we have recovered over 20 billion from such uh, 
you know, cases. Uh, but criminal trials, of course, is being detected by the status, the uh, procedural laws, you know, the Evidence Act, etc. I myself, in this uh, case, I've been in the witness box in the last five years. But the trial is ongoing, and I believe, um, uh, you know, justice will be served at the end of the trial. Let's head back to the earlier story now, where the federal government is set to receive the sum of £4.2 million uh, from the United Kingdom, recovered from associates and family members of former Delta State Governor Mr. James Ibori. A two-term governor of Delta State, Mr. James Ibori, in February 2012, was accused of stealing US$250 million United States dollars from the Nigerian public purse. He pleaded guilty to 10 counts of money laundering and conspiracy to defraud at Southwark Crown Court, London. And in April of 2012, he was sentenced to 13 years imprisonment, but was later released in 2016 after serving just four years behind bars. <laughs> this signing of memorandum of understanding between the British and Nigerian governments is for the return of 4.2 million British pounds said to be from friends and family members of the former Delta State Governor. These funds that we have secured the return of so far are from the friends and family of James Ibori. The case against James Ibori in terms of the amount to be returned directly from him is still ongoing. She also states the position of the United Kingdom in siphoning of criminal proceeds from Nigeria to the UK. That money attained through criminality, through theft, is not welcome in the UK. And we will use the full weight of our in law enforcement to crack down on those who think they have found a safe haven. Don't send it to the UK. On the part of the Nigerian government, the recovery of Ibori loots is a demonstration of political will to fight corruption, as it assures of adequate utilisation of the funds. The Federal Executive Council under the able leadership of President Muhammad Buhari has directed that the instant repatriated funds should be deployed towards the completion of the following legacy projects. One, the second Niger Bridge, two, Abuja to Kano Expressway, and three, the Lagos Ibadan Expressway under the coordination of the Nigeria Social Investment Authority to ensure integrity of the process. The federal government is expected to receive the 4.2 million pounds in two weeks from now based on the MOU signed. What the citizens hope to see is a manifestation of this recovery in terms of better welfare and better economy for Nigeria. From the Federal Ministry of Justice Abuja, Emperor Simon, Channel Television News. News round comes to a close in the Central African nation, Equatorial Guinea, where a mass funeral ceremony has been held for the victims of a series of explosions in the country's largest city. The explosion killed at least 105 people and injured more than 600 others. Prime Minister Francisco Asue and Vice President Teodoro Obiang watched as the victims' coffins were carried in procession into a soccer stadium in Bata, where the blast happened earlier in the week. The government has blamed the explosions on fires set by farmers living near a military base and the negligent handling of dynamite stocks by the military unit guarding them. And that's news around this week. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Tenyo Alash Shibo Ale. Enjoy the rest of your weekend.